Hello everyone, welcome to this next video on classical mechanics. In the previous video we saw an, the derivation for Hamilton's canonical equations of motion and in this video we shall see an example for solving or calculating the equations of motion when the case is of simple pendulum. This case we also discussed when we derive the equations of motion using the Lagrange's equation. Now let us uh, see what is the Hamiltonian corresponding to this and uh, making use of this Hamilton's canonical equations of motion. How can we reach at obtaining the equations of motion? So here this is the simple pendulum that is uh, being uh, attached to this string of length L. This point is A, this point is C, this point is B and it is hanging from the point O. The length is L and the angle here of oscillation is theta. We have assumed mass of the bob is m, length of the string is l and theta is the angle between the rest position and the deflected position. These are the assumptions. Moreover, the generalized coordinates here are to be taken as r and theta as we discussed in the previous videos. right? The constraint that is applied over here is that the length of the string is fixed. Uh, so our r is fixed, we are only left with one generalized coordinate that is theta. So here q1 is only theta. So that is the generalized coordinate. So first of all we will calculate the kinetic energy as we done previously. This kinetic energy T is calculated using the formula half mv square. v square is basically the uh, der time derivative of displacement or the distance s. Now what is the distance s over here? So this is the distance that this bob covers from the point uh, from tra uh, traveling from point A to the point B. So how can we calculate that? By making use of this formula arc length by radius is equal to the angle suspended by it. So from here s comes out to be L theta. So it's the derivative of s would simply be L into theta dot. Why? Because L is constant. So uh, and our generalized uh, coordinate that is theta. So we have substituted the value over here and this comes out to be the kinetic energy. So next thing is to uh, calculate the potential energy. Potential energy is usually calculated by this formula MGH where this height is taken from some reference level. So here we take the reference level to be point A that means uh, that means we will say this initial position is our reference level. So when we are at B, we have uh, moved up from this point A this much distance. So we need to calculate what this distance is, that is this much height, right? So it would be the total length minus the length OC. So the total length OA minus the length OC and we can calculate this length using uh, trigonometry right using this angle theta so we can arrive at this expression of uh, 1 minus cos theta why because the whole length is l this length this much portion this is l cos theta by virtue of this angle theta and this angle being 90 degree right so the length ca that is h that would be L minus L cos theta. So it would simply be uh, mg L minus L cos theta. So it would be this one. So the Lagrangian is given by T minus V. We have T with us. We have V with us. We just substituted the value. So in previously we used the Lagrange equation that was del L by del theta minus ddt of del L by del theta dot is equal to 0. So this we had used in uh, in the last video and we have seen what are the equations of motion using this. In this video we will make use the Hamiltonian. So we know by definition this Hamiltonian is given to be summation pj qj minus L. So that means uh, whatever number of generalized coordinates we have that many terms do appear here. But in our case we only have q1 which is equal to theta so we only have the term chorus this momentum corresponding to the variable theta and the generalized coordinate theta 
and its derivative qj dot minus l l is this thing so we have just substituted this quantity so now proceeding further because we are in hamiltonian uh, and we know uh, for this uh, this lagrange has basis now because uh, we have we are dealing with theta so it would be our generalized coordinate is theta so that means it would be theta theta dot and t and now we are shifting to hamiltonian approach so it would contain the generalized coordinate that means theta and the momentum corresponding to this coordinate let us call it by p and with the subscript theta corres uh, suggesting it is with respect to this coordinate theta and time so here we are to eliminate this theta dot from our lagrange from this expression h so wherever this theta dot is appearing we have to get rid of this so for uh, for doing that what we can do we can just calculate theta dot using the expression uh this we know pj is equal to del l by del qj dot this is the very important relation one must remember this one we have l with us this is our l so we have to differentiate it with respect to qj dot qj here is theta so it would be theta dot so when you take the partial derivative of this l with respect to theta dot you will only get half m l square as such because these these are constants into 2 into theta dot so basically we are left only with this term so that means you got a relation between p theta and theta dot so uh, you can as for now you can substitute the value of theta dot in terms of p theta so we have just replaced this thing we have just replaced theta dot here and here using this expression so we are uh, left with p theta as such the value of theta dot from here Minus half m l square as such, and the value of theta dot square from here, right, and this term as such. So when you simplify this a little, you will be left with h is equal to this thing. So now once we have h, now we can use Hamilton's canonical equations of motion. And what are they? you also have to remember these right so these were qj dot is equal to del h by del pj and pj dot is equal to minus del h by del qj right so these are the canonical equations that we were looking for and in our case because our q1 q1 is theta so that means we have qj as theta dot and pj as p theta dot so uh, similarly we just uh, we have just replaced these notations right and we can calculate the values of this and this from the given hamiltonian here so we can partially differentiate this h once with respect to p theta another time with respect to theta so when you differentiate this quantity with respect to p theta from first term you will be getting half into 2 p theta half by ml square would be constant so you just have to differentiate p theta square so it would be 2 into p theta 2 and 2 cancel so we are left with this term similarly when you differentiate uh, this h with respect to theta the first term would give you zero because we are doing it partially and from the second term this uh, this term would again give you zero and ml multiplied by this cos theta would give you ml uh, mgl sin theta the derivative of minus cos theta would be sin theta so you can substitute these values into these equations so what would what do we get we get theta dot is equal to here in place uh, of uh, del h by del p theta we just have to write this term and similarly here we write this term right so these are the equations of motion when we are in Uh, the hamilt uh, when we are using the hamiltonian approach but to match this with the ones uh, with the equations of motion that we obtained previously what we have to do we have to again convert our basis from now because now we are in hamiltonian approach so our basis is qj pjt so we have to go back to this basis to see 
are equations of motions so in doing so we have to eliminate this pj so what we can do we have calculated the value of this pj right pj basically is p theta in our case because our generalized coordinate is theta so that means p theta is equal to ml theta dot ml square theta dot so we can just substitute it into our given equations right so when you substitute it in the first equation you will get theta dot is equal to theta dot so which is meaningless to calculate right and when you substitute it here you add p theta as ml square theta dot so when you calculate the derivative of this thing you will be getting p theta dot that would be ml square because these are constants they will be left as such and you just have to perform the time derivative of this theta so you will be getting double dot so replacing this value over here we will get this and the right hand side would be the same so you see m cancels with m l square cancels with l we are left with l theta double dot plus g sine theta is equal to zero and when our angle of deflection is small in that case we say the sine of theta that is nearly equal to theta so we just replace this sine theta by theta so this is our second order differential equation which represents the motion equation of motion for the simple pendulum and this is exactly the same equation that we have derived using the Lagrangian approach so now you must be thinking when we have other notions also to uh, describe this kind of equation why do we use such methods and uh, because very easily we can derive the, these e equations from Newton's law and uh, also we have seen that we can derive this from the Lagrangian's uh, approach so why do we need Hamilton's canonical equations or the Hamiltonian approach to calculate such equations you will see the answer to this question in the next video uh, where I shall be talking about the uh, application and uh, the advantages of using this Hamiltonian approach. Well that is it for this video. In the next video we will see the answer to this one why uh, we are learning this lengthier approach to solve such simple problems. So that is it for this video. Thank you for watching.